Welcome everybody for the Cisco and AWS Innovations for a CloudForce World session. My name is Carlos Pereira. I'm the Chief Architect for the Strategy, Emerging Technology and Incubation Teams inside Cisco. And it's a pleasure to be with all of you here at reInvent 2020. So all teams are freeing all the pressures for an all digital world going out there. And the majority of the companies have all those teams that are developing new cloud native applications, the platform teams, the cloud architects and the DevOps. And they interface with the infra people or the teams that are responsible for integrations, the security teams, the IT ops have been challenging and the agility so far has been a very strong premises up to a point that 43% of the organizations want to release their changes very frequently and be able to restore on the event of any incident or any problem in an hour or maximum within a day. So that tells that agility was a very strong premises up front. But now here comes the pandemic and the business before COVID was pretty much like applications run on AWS cloud, as I have on that example on the right hand side. And the corporations have their own data centers and people accessing SaaS and the security and integration in between those applications were working and there was the internet that connects the users and devices going to applications and data running in the cloud. And then during and now after the COVID environment, what happens is there is a new element on this landscape. And this new element is called home. There's a lot of people working from home. I myself and many of the attendees on the 2020 session most likely will be on the similar situation. And the home implies that I need a new place to guarantee a secure access towards, and not only that, to make sure that compliance policies and related to collaboration, not only for collaboration at work, but for learning, uh, schools, and all this becomes part of that equation. And cloud empowered this very nicely for this to happen. And with that part of this new scenario, not only agility was the initial qualification criteria for how applications will move into cloud native, but now we have resiliency as a very small and very key considerations that has evolved as the pandemic kept business reevaluating their own ways to go after cloud native. So Cisco launched back in June a new set of solutions called the Cisco Business Resilience Solutions, which are predicated on three anchor themes. The secure remote workforce that meant to answer the following question, hey, Cisco, I'm working now for home. Many of my employees are working for home. It's not that effective. It's not that uh, uh, proactive from a sense that I would like to be. And I still need people to collaborate better and have some security profiles that I need to take care of. Can you help how? The second aspect is there is the trusted workplace requirement when people come back to home, from home, sorry, to the, to the offices, either manufacturing plants or regular office facilities, when people need to have now social distance implementations and the whole trust within environments go to a secondary level and comes on a third level and you had more and more deep dive on how a trusted workplace actually means. And the last pillar of that business resilience solution has to do in how we optimize digital workloads as many customers and business are moving more and more to digital. So I have been talking with customers that came to me and say, hey, Carlos, I had a digitization plan for my business and that was a two year journey and I now need to do this in four months because my competitors are ahead, everybody's working from home, all my applications need to be scaling out and available to run from anywhere. So that solution has been available from Cisco since the mid of the year. And this session here on AWS reInvent is gonna focus on the top one, on the modern applications and how to optimize for digital workloads. And the approach here is if application is the business for the majority of those customers, and by the time that those business have the application being center and core for them, revenue generation and relevance in the marketplace, the experience of that application becomes the currency and optimizing that experience is how you succeed on the marketplace yourself. So Cisco brought the focus to optimize the application experience from a cloud native perspective by managing 
applications as experience. It not necessarily focus on the locations or destinations where they may or may not be running. So we do that by doing pretty much correlation for the applications associated workloads to the business, to the network, to the systems, and at the same time, considering the correlation between the infrastructure and the application workloads that runs on top of that as it relates to security, compliance, and regulations that comes with that. As you can see for that slide, you have this touching upon multiple solutions from Cisco, but more than anything, it brings together multiple teams. As I had on the initial slide, the interaction between the teams is what makes the agility go faster on the cloud native world. And as we bring the resilience and combination of agility all together, the interaction between those teams and amongst the people that are part of those, as we correlate this data between multiple disciplines is key to provide an optimization for the app experience. With that said, let me try to set the framework on how we're gonna have the discussion during this session. And I'm gonna use a typical cloud native application when I have a hybrid environment, some of these running on private cloud, and the other piece running on AWS cloud. And the instance of that application running on the private cloud has a three-tier typical application just for the sake of an example here, running on Kubernetes, so full containerized. And as you can see, I have this running within a virtual machine, which many customers still do, and have some examples of infrastructure as code with Terraform and, and GitLab as a CI CD pipeline. And the DevOps user on the bottom left is being accessed in this and this similar application now also three tier for my examples running on kubernetes full cloud native is running on aws cloud and the environment that i'm going to touch upon is what is that environment from the lens of the experience that is expected from there who can or cannot access it and where it runs on this case on a hybrid environment so as i start to look at the experience the first approach I and mean, the first lens that i'm going to bring to that is the application performance management, which is the correlation of application and workloads to the line of business teams by correlating this to performance to the applications. And for that, we leverage Cisco App Dynamics, which is available through AWS, including on the marketplace, a very successful offer for us on AWS Marketplace and fully integrated with every component and services of AWS Cloud that is represented on the left-hand side. On this particular example for this, application that I'm using here, which is built on Kubernetes, then we have not only the monitoring and the embedded capabilities to capture information from the Kubernetes nodes and all the clusters that may run on AWS Cloud, in my example, but also to generate metric services, event services. And one specific thing that's very interesting, which is AUM services, the end user monitoring that goes with that, which pretty much captures what would be the experience for the end user running on the mobile application, on my example, on iOS and Android. And at the same time, App Dynamics correlates that with the business side of it. So if you have an application generating revenue, it's gonna show you how many US dollars is, or pounds or euros is being at the real time generated for that particular application. So it's a very interesting component that we have on our solution for app experience monitoring, but the data that App Dynamics generates from AWS Cloud on this particular application can correlate and automatically correlates with Cisco InterSight, which does the management from the IT ops lens for that environment. So if you see on that screen, I have a hybrid environment when I have part of that application, the front end actually running on AWS Cloud and part of the back end on this particular example is running on premises on a mix of hypervisor between VMware and Cisco itself. And that InterSight offer brings a real time full visibility of a dependency map of a supply chain on which components within the application, starting from the business application and its process all the way down to network compute and storage is being used. And not only that, it generates a graphic of optimization. As you can see on that particular InterSight screen, you can see that the business application has all this dependence portrayed and there are some reds there. Interesting to capture in this is the application and the workloads correlation between the line of business teams and the IT ops team, the system people in charge of that infrastructure. When you can have, for instance, a typical scenario that may happen on a, on a customer environment, where I have, let's say, from a transaction per second, I have less than 20% utilization. 
So the infrastructure team may say, hey, it's not my problem. The infrastructure is okay. I have enough red room to run whatever you want and even more. But if you look at that, the response time for the end user perspective for that mobile app is 10 seconds, which is unacceptable for anybody waits 10 seconds for a response of a screen on a mobile app. So from that regards, even though the infrastructure may be running with a lot of red room from that hybrid environment, the application experience is still not good. So what we did is we bring a solution to the market that correlates the up, up dynamics generation APM information on the top with exactly what runs at the infrastructure level on a hybrid environment, on my example, and we bring real-time recommendations. On this case, a scale-up recommendation, which just says, hey, as the experience is associated on this particular application with the front end, and front end is running on AWS, our recommendation in real-time is for you to right-size this by boosting and changing for an instance for an M5 to X large, for a C5 for X large, and it happens to run on AWS West, an Oregon region, and here's the name of the instance. And not only that, we integrate automatically with everything that relates with the ITOM, on my example here, services now, and the trouble ticket that's generated for that. And you can automate that procedure altogether, and some customers just do. They consider how much money would that change imply and correlate this with the revenue that AppDynamics is showing you that you're not making by not making that transition. So if you're not fixing, you may be not making $100,000 of revenue stream that that app may generate to you, and that fix may cost you less than $1,000 a month. So it's orders of magnitude difference, and that correlation brings the decision process ahead, and you've done this on multiple environments and applications within AWS Cloud. The last approach that I want to touch on this size application experience consideration is the integration between AppDynamics and Thousandize. Thousandize is a solution from Cisco that brings end-to-end uh, uh, -end monitoring from the lens of the internet. So we have the network as an internet being the network that communicates between an end user on a mobile device or a remote location on an IoT device and the application running, for instance, on AWS Cloud. And we have this performance manager on AWS Cloud and the end user and the internet is in between. So we now bring Thousand Eyes, which brings synthetic visibility for all the internet traffic and we can hook them and stitch them together to have a full end-to-end -end experience for that application, including SaaS apps that runs, for instance, on AWS Cloud. So that was the initial aspect of this when I checked pretty much the line of business people and the IT ops system people and the correlation between those two. Let me touch upon the same application now from the lens of security. If I'm trying to secure a cloud native application for both the lens of the consumer of that app and the developer, how would that look like? So let me take the same application. I have the private environment in AWS Cloud, and I'm having now the DevOps user being represented as an, an off-net user. What does that mean? Is an user that is not within a, a location, is not through a VPN, is not authenticated to a particular security profile or access control, and it, for that, I'm implementing a zero trust policy for that particular user on this case, representing my workforce being remote, accessing an application that runs on a private environment. And at the same time, I also have a representation for the workplace where enterprise end users just go and access a building, they're having their own access controls to the building, either via badges or biometrics or whatever it is. And by the time they are inside the building, they are within the controls of the workplace. But it doesn't mean that if Carlos is within a building that belongs to the company, that Carlos automatically has access for that application that happens to be running on AWS Cloud. So you see the full zero trust between workplace and workforce as it relates to the workloads, on this case, a hybrid workload. So if I look at this, let me go a little bit more in details on how Cisco can help on those workloads. And for that, I'm going to leverage four solutions that we have on the market available with AWS Cloud, which is AppDynamics that I mentioned before, StealthWatch Cloud, which provides network and pod for this Kubernetes approach identification for anomalies on the network behavior. Titration, on the other hand, does application segmentation, all the process profiling at the runtime for the Kubernetes pods that runs on premises and on the AWS Cloud 
within those services. And I'm, le I'm leveraging also Duo, which does multi-factor authentication for all the application from the end user and also from the developer lens. So let's go one by one. So the first scenario would be a DevOps user, that off-net user accessing the on-premises, the private cloud uh, application, and instead of being the user, is actually a tool. Let's say it's a GitLab tool, and you're trying to push some code to update on the pipeline that's go there. And what we provide with dual multi-factor authentication is a capability of network gateway and reverse proxies that provide secure access to the CI/CD tool and the CI/CD pipeline that's running there. And while it, all that is happening, we can leverage this filtration that provides zero trust private networking by doing profiling and segmentation of the applications while it's being built. And at the same time, StealthWatch Cloud is doing baselining for the network traffic to catch or normalize and see an anomalous traffic that may provide a threat detection that may go on. As I go for the AWS Cloud side, as I'm portraying, I have an authenticated enterprise user already within the perimeters of security access to the corporation, but that person is still needs to be authenticated for that app now running on AWS Cloud as the Kubernetes front end of this web app. And Duo embeds our SDK for web app applications within this front end app running on containers on Kubernetes for multi-factor authentication. And while this is happening, Within AWS, we leverage the same app dynamics that I had before for performance management, but it does automatically tracing from within the application to see any variations on the security profile that may or may not happen while the application is running at the runtime. And for the runtime standpoint, we also have the Kubernetes thread detection for behavior analysis with the same StealthWatt cloud running as an AWS services. And the titration is leveraged the same way now in this case for zero trust cloud for container app segmentation within the AWS cloud runtime of this particular app. And last but not least, I can have the same DevOps user now, instead of being the tool trying to access himself or herself, the app running on AWS cloud and the front end of that app on his own cell phone, if you will. And then we use cloud single sign-on for access gateway integration with Duo for multi-factor authentication with AWS cloud. So all of that is available shipping and we have a lot of customers that had this ecosystem running together. So we just saw how the hybrid environment works and all the pieces of the how you secure the developer and the consumer of that application may look like. Let's now deep dive a little bit more on the AWS cloud. Let's imagine that this application is running on AWS cloud only and we are, we are provide the same security aspect by going a little deeper. If you look at the QR code on the top and you access this, you have a full design guide that goes in details on everything that I'm gonna briefly share with you now. So I'm looking at the same application within AWS Cloud. It's a single VPC, two availability zones, a classical way to represent, it's not necessarily how all the applications would run, but just for an example here. So you have the web front end running as an instance, and so the, the, database, the applications and the database I'm using RBS here, an RDS synchronous replication between the two availability zones. That application is being accessible, the front end within AWS Cloud for the private link, direct connect and internet gateway. And pretty much that's what we have. And to go for the first wave, I already mentioned before, AppDynamics for the full application performance management and the integration and correlation of data with InterSight. Now we leverage the same AppDynamics real-time monitoring of this Kubernetes-based environment for also do tracing, which I, show on the example before. It appeals to the line of business that are building that app and recollecting how much of the revenue that app may be generating to the business because as I said before, application is the business on a cloud native environment and the experience of that is the currency, but it also correlates with the IT ops, the system people that is managing the AWS cloud environment here. So if I go more to Cisco titration on AWS, you have the agents installed on the instance, on this case, the web front end and the application servers. And that agent can send information to Tetration as a service on the cloud, which provides not only the zero trust visibility model, but also the enforcement by detecting vulnerabilities on the software package being used and provide micro segmentation for enforcement of zero trust policy at a runtime. You have two types of agents that can be implemented, the visibility agent and the enforcement agents, and those are part of how you do that full runtime environment security and implementation of that within AWS Cloud. The fourth, the third component that I had there was StealthWatch Cloud on AWS, 
it on this case does behavior analysis from the network by receiving on my example here on that screen just VPC logs or VPC flow logs rather from AWS providing behavioral changes for reporting and visibility. Stealth Watch Cloud not only monitor the networking aspect, it fully support all the visibility for instance on AWS Lambda, which I don't have on this particular example here. And last but not least, I have the dual for multi-factor authentication within AWS, which appeals to the three teams there, the line of business that is building the application, embedding the MFA for the consumer of that, and the IT ops and the networking on how you have access control for the management console for an AWS coming from an external connectivity lens and for the security op on how you define the multi-factor authentication as part of the security policy and compliance. Dual has a quick start within AWS, it's very easy to implement and the details on how you get this installed and configured within AWS is all available in the quick start. Go please check it out, it's, it's fully there. And the last piece that I didn't cover on the previous Go and navigation of the hybrid environment is the Cisco Threads response. Cisco has a thread intelligence source that's called Talos. It's pretty strong and Cisco and, and Amazon have a, a ties on this thread intelligence as it relates to Talos, but it is the source of information that feeds all the previous products that I said as it relates to thread intelligence, contextual approach on vulnerabilities in real time that's happening out there and they have interactive visualization and the Cisco thread response also maps with two other offers from Cisco that relate to AWS cloud which is the anti-malware Cisco AMP for endpoints which you can apply not only for the apps running on AWS cloud but for consumers running also on the end devices being laptops or mobile devices and Cisco umbrella which provides the cloud-based firewall and all the capabilities for CASB when you accessing SaaS applications and providing security for their environment. All of those components, you can have more details on the QR codes that I have with that. And in order to wrap that security view, we have an offer from Cisco that is available in shipping today with SecureX. And what it does, it has a single cockpit, as I usually call for security operations, the day two life cycle of the security environment. And that screen shows the SecurityX product by itself when you can actually create your own dashboards by aggregating different sources of security information. In my case here, I have the anti malware I have the DNS security, I have email security, I have file that provides information. And on the bottom of that slide, you can see a ribbon that calls incidents. What we do is, as I said in the beginning of the session, the correlate of information from multiple sources on the case of Cisco products and our multi-vendor offers for security when you correlate and help to aggregate on the incident cases if that eventually happened on you are under attack or there is a DDoS going on on the an application being presented from AWS cloud and so on and so forth. Another characteristic of SecurityX is the orchestrator. You have an embedded, we have an embedded orchestrator within SecurityX that allows anybody to create their own workflows. So on this example on that screen you can see on the left hand side I have all the AWS services and I'm creating a very basic workflow that is an inbound access control list for the block and you can drag and drop from the left and put on the middle canvas and you build the workflow the way you are it becomes an object and from that you can have this object as part of the validation and commit on that dashboard and be part of that data correlation aggregation for security infrastructure and application workloads and this is all embedded with AWS and available today. So. We can also bring the AWS own security services that integrate with Cisco as part of this architecture. Like here, I have web application firewall and AWS Shield as a services. You can see how that will augment my whole end-to-end -end security for the provider and the developer of that particular application. And I'm also including the access to that particular application running from AWS Cloud, and in this case, one or more regions. And that is through the software defined in one area networking. Cisco SD1 provides that connectivity, for instance, for branches or remote locations to access that app running on AWS and, and can be presented as instead as services or even a SaaS workload that goes there. Before I go more on that SD1 net networking piece, just to double check, we already covered in the beginning app dynamics and intersite from correlation to the line of business and the IT ops system piece. We just wrap it how we did that for the security ops and let's go a little bit for the networking. On the networking for Cisco SD-1, 
we have two ways to consume the cloud networking with AWS Cloud. The first one is do-it-yourself. It's fully available on AWS Marketplace. You can get the components and build the way you want. Or you can also use the services that we have together, which is Cloud on Ramp, that allows you to jump, for instance, on edge collectors with partners like Equinix or Megaport that allows you to, from multiple locations, be able to ramp and access the cloud from an SD-WAN standpoint. So the architecture and how this comes together is available on that slide. Again, I have a QR code on the top right that you can scan and it gives you further details and go in on the design guides on that particular diagram. And let me show you because you have two modes and two options for getting this coming together. The first one is I'm demoing here on the Cisco vManages our SD1 console when I'm going in cloud on ramp with AWS for infrastructure as a service. So you go there, you put your keys to access the AWS environment. And what we are doing here, I'm creating a transit VPC, which pretty much is going to be the hub and spoke for doing multiple host VPCs inside AWS, connect to that transit VPC to where all the branches will access via an SDN. So as you can see, what I'm doing now first is building the two virtual edge devices for Cisco SD1 inside a VPC on within an AWS cloud. That's going to be the transit. And when that is instantiated and automatically instantiated, you will see that it will give me the capability to connect all the branches to that transit VPC, which has been already automated on that example. And then I use an AWS account to discover which host's VPC I mapped it to that. And when discovering which host is which ones I want to actually be part of the extended cloud networking access to that. By the time I map the hosted VPCs, we can then automate the interconnect between what is the transit VPC and the host VPCs within AWS and map it back to the branches accessing that environment. That's the solution and the architecture motion number one. The other approach is using AWS own transit gateway, which is available in shipping today. And we can do this, including for using the cloud on ramp edge by leveraging colo partners, as I mentioned before. So on this example, I have a customer that has two groups, an engineering and a marketing group, and I'm creating two different VPNs being accessed for the branch for an SD1 edge. And what happens is pretty much I'm ramping this to the cloud, accessing, let's say, an Equinix partnership here and going to SD1 edge mapping to a TGW region number one. And the same customer may have a third team, HR running on a different country, a different branch, and different location that I'm peering to a, a cloud on ramp environment on the edge and also connecting to TGW on AWS region number two. And what we do is the full integration of Cisco SD1 across all the access, either being on top of classical networkings like MPLS circuits or even through direct internet access and making this secure interconnection for mapping with the TGW. Here's the demo how we do that. The same Cisco V manager for SD1. On this case, I'm going to do cloud on ramp, but I'm going to leverage cloud on ramp for infrastructure as a service with the TGW. So you see that visibility. On this case, I'm using my IAM role for that particular environment, and I'm going to define which region, like I had before, the West West, and then I'm going to leverage the transit gateway that's available on that particular region as a service for an AWS cloud. And by configuring that, I just click on Cisco and AWS integrations, fully automated the configuration of the peering with the TGW, and the cloud on ramp in AWS is already done. We just pretty much see all the sites that are connected, how many tangent gates I'm using in that particular region. I have a geographic view to say where those branches are located. And not only that, I have a full topology view that maps all the hops from the branches to get from the overlay through the TGW for all the host VPCs that exists within AWS Cloud on one region or multiple regions. With that said, that's pretty much covers the session. We touch upon all the teams and we did application workload correlations to the business teams, to the network systems, and all together to the security. And that pretty much concludes our session. Thank you very much for watching with us. And please don't forget to complete this survey. Have a wonderful day.